Hi there, this is Vlad with the Bitcoin Takeover and today I'm going to do another unboxing and this time around I also have a story to share about this so I received these two in the mail about a year ago after I did my interview with Lex and Liu from Kobo he's the CEO of that company he makes hardware wallets for Chinese miners and this is the Kobo Vault and I suppose there's some dust on the plastic wrapping and that's totally my fault. I have held this in storage for about a year before opening it. And I'm going to do it today, but before that, I also have the Kobo tablet, which is their take on the build Foddel or the Crypto Steel. It's like, so you can see it here. It's like a piece of metal which helps you store everything related to your keys. And it also comes with a screwdriver, so I guess this is convenient. You just grab it from here, and it opens, I guess, just like a build file. Uh, I suppose you need to loosen this up with the screwdriver. So I'm not going to embarrass myself in front of the camera with my clumsiness, but this is what you're supposed to do. And this is pretty well-adjusted, to say the least. But I'm going to unscrew it for you, just to show you what's inside. Okay, so I just loosened it up. And inside it looks just like a build file. And for comparison, I also have a build file here. So this is the Kobo tablet. This is the Bill Fuddle. I guess the Bill Fuddle feels nicer a bit. It is a little bit longer in size. But other than that, it's metal, it's stainless steel. I don't think it makes much of a difference. This is cheaper, I guess. Not necessarily cheaper, but more inexpensive. But also the Bill Fuddle, I know that they did some research on this design and they made a better way to store your plates and I don't mean just these plates but also the stuff that you're supposed to dispose after you use like the steel letters which are behind this packaging so what else do I get inside it's like a thank you note and this says that as a token of appreciation I also find a $5 coupon code that I can use on the Kobo store. So I guess this is nice. This is interesting. Uh, I'm supposed to check this and see if I can still claim it. I have an instruction guide which I can access if I scan a QR code. And these are all of the letters of the alphabet in metal. You have only three of those, so A to E, F, G, H, L, J, Y. Yeah, this is it. You have these, and you're supposed to take these off and you're going to write your mnemonic. And if you're not aware what your mnemonic is, well, it's something that came out with the BIP39 standard and helps you transform the private key in a series of 12 or 24 words and I guess you can also do 18 so that's what you do with it now in the question about Kobo versus Bill Foddle I don't know what I should say they feel kind of the same I think I still prefer the feel of the Bill Foddle but they're metal plates so how much of a difference can this be you open them. I definitely prefer the feel of this over this, for whatever reason. It's hard for me to describe, but this feels more abrasive, but it's also harder to slip from your hands. And this feels finer, like you're touching something that's more pleasant. I'm not sure what the price difference is between these two, but this is fine, I guess. It's not an electronic device. 
it's not something perishable, you just hold it and you hope that it's going to withstand fire and floods and everything bad that can happen while you're huddling. So this has been the Pogo tablet. I've also showed you like the reference device, which this is trying to emulate just because I happen to have it. And right now I'm going to switch to the main event of this video. And I have waited for about a year for this to happen. So be happy that you get this exclusive moment, which is also, I don't know, unexpected and surprising for myself. I picked up the screwdriver and I'm going to use it as a tool to unbox this a lot faster. It's nice that you can tear it apart in this design line, but there it goes. I didn't take too much, I didn't put too much consideration into that. I was too brutal with it. So this has two sides that can be opened. It's an interesting design definitely. So to be sure that nobody else has opened this box, they have this system in place where you rip this card in part. And once again, I miserably failed to get it all the way through. So yeah, this is it. I dispose this in the bin. And on the other side, I need to also make sure that nobody has touched this. So the ethical approach is to also remove this. Ah, oh, come on. I suck so much. I should not do unboxing videos because look at me. I'm terrible. So let's say that I opened it this way. Right here it says Kobo and you can see that there's another sticker which I guess is put for security reasons. I take this out of the box, so this is the main box where everything is held. And I have two other smaller boxes in here. And I suppose that this one contains the device. And you can see that it's sealed on both sides. And this one is not sealed and I guess it has like an instruction manual or something. It has kind of an apple feeling to this. It opens slowly. I took the top off. What is this? Oh, this is a battery. So you can use this to power your device. Or you can use standard AAA batteries, which is a nice feature of the Kobo. So if you listen to Season 4, Episode 9, I think it is, with Lex and Liu, you're going to find out more about this device at the time he was just announcing it. By the time I publish this video, I think it's likely that I also do an interview with him. And this is a 1000 milliamperes battery or milliamperes. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to pronounce that. But I also get a charger, which is USB-C. This is nice. And I'm not sure if that's everything in this box. Yes, it is. So let me put this back. I was actually excited about AAA batteries, but this is even better. Because usually a proprietary battery, even though it's harder to source, and finding one for exactly this size is going to be a nightmare. If, for example, it goes out of production. But AAA batteries are nice. It's just a way to be sure that even if the company goes out of business and you're not going to be able to find any more parts for your device or new devices, you can still, I guess, build your own. And inside, let me take these off. Okay. I'm removing this. This was the security seal. Now it says void. This is a nice touch. Actually, it did say void. So on this side it says Kobo, on the other side it says void. So if you open this, it's no longer secure. So you should pay attention if you get a Kobo, because unless you find the stickers intact, you're going to have a hard time. There are lots of supply chain attacks that may happen with these devices, with people who deliver it, figuring out that you have a Bitcoin specific device. So they open it and they put like 
a mnemonic card with words that actually open their wallet. So I have this piece of paper which I'm going to take out. And here I get another coupon and it says Never have to trust a third party again with fully transparent QR code data transmissions. Scan with any ordinary QR scanner to view all transaction data in human readable format. As a token of appreciation for your support, here's a 5% off your next order or showing your friend the best way to be your own bank. So yeah, I got a 5% coupon code. If you want this, message me and you can get it, I guess. I feel generous today. I got this one as a review unit. I have held it for about one year in storage and I feel ashamed of myself for it. And this is the Kobo Vault Pro. So I got definitely the nicer version of it. I open the back plate, which hosts the battery. Okay, so you can put AAA batteries here. This is one of the main selling points of this. Plus, you can scan QR codes with a camera. It has a camera on the back. It's a pretty nice device. It feels nice. It's a bit larger than the cold card. It's a bit larger than the Trezor. It's definitely larger than the Ledger, but it's still small enough to be held in the palm of your hand. And it's smaller than the average smartphone. So let me see if I can find a phone here. So this is the HTC Exodus 1S full node Bitcoin phone or full Bitcoin node phone and this is the Kobo Vault and as you can see the phone is a lot larger, a lot taller and the screen size, let's see the screen size on this one so I remove this extra layer, you sign what you see, I remove this extra layer and voila! It has quite a nice screen, I gotta admit, they did a great job with this. And now let me put the battery in the back, because it's going to work a lot better with the lithium battery that I received for this. So I take this out. I hope that it has some energy on it, or else I will not be able to show you this unless I pause the recording. Everything is designed and made by Kobo in China. Oh, and this has kind of a magnetic attachment, so you can feel how it wants to get in here. That's it. <laughs> it actually feels nice the way you do that. I, I would say this is more on the premium side than their Kobo tablet metal plate. And I pressed the power button, hoping that this would open but I guess it has no battery and I need to charge it. So how about I take 10 minutes off and then I get back, you know, I take 10 minutes off to charge this and then I get back and show you the interface of this device. Okay, so the battery is fully charged now. It took like 20, 30 minutes for me to get to this point. I'm not sure how long it takes for it to be 100% charged, but it's more than enough. So I was able to charge this with the USB-C cable. And in the meantime, I observed something very important. So the Kobo Vault only has this system with the camera to scan QR codes and confirm transactions. It's air-gapped, but you can also use PSVT and undergo firmware updates over here. So you can see that there is an SD card slot, I hope that you can see it. And you insert the micro SD card here, and this is how you put transactions on this that you're supposed to verify and validate with PSBT, and that's also how you undergo firmware updates in the device. So I'm happy that I removed the battery and I played with this for a while because I observed how you're supposed to update this. It doesn't have a USB connection, it doesn't have Wi-Fi, it doesn't have Bluetooth. So from this point of view it's air gap. You cannot access it from any remote device unless you're very advanced. So right now I'm going to open it for the very first time and I hope the screen lit up. Yeah, now it says Kobo. 
for both valves to be more precise. In the meantime, as it boots up, let's compare it in size to other hardware wallets. Okay, this is the Kobo Vault and this is the other big hardware wallet that I have, which is the Keep Key. And you can see that they're kind of the same height. Not really, the Kobo is bigger. And also wider, so this is definitely the bigger device. It's not as big as a phone, it's not... It's kind of hard drive sized, I guess. I used to say that this is like a hard drive, but it's a lot smaller. So, in terms of how it feels, I would say that it's on par with the Keep Key. Now let me compare it with the Trezor One, which is the original hardware wallet, the first one released in 2014, the plastic version with two buttons. You can see that you can fit like one, two, three, four of these in a Kobo. So I don't think this is as pocket friendly. What else do I have here? I have the Trezor Model T, so you can see that this is wider, but still you can fit like three and a half of these in the Kobo, mostly because it has such a large screen. I don't know what I did here, I should go back. It's in Chinese, and as you can see the keyboard looks very similar with what you find on Android devices. So I suppose that I picked the Chinese language by mistake. It's 42% charged. I suppose I'm going to restart it, and that's what I did. And as this happens, let me compare it once again with another hardware wallet, and this is the Ledger Nano S, and the Nano X is the exact same size, but look at this. This is like a USB flash drive, this is like a mini tablet. It's a lot bigger. I guess you can put this in a pocket, like, you know, a pocket in your coat inside close to your chest. So what else do I have here? This is the Bitbox O2. Actually, this is the front of it. So as you can see, this is also the size of a flash drive. You can fit like six or seven of those in the Kobo Vault. And I think I also had a cold card laying around. I don't see it anymore, but... So here it is. This is the cold card and this is the Kobo Vault Pro, the Pro version. So this costs like $169, $170. And it costs more just because it comes with this proprietary battery. I guess it's a lot better to run it with its own battery than AAA batteries, but for backup, you can also remove this and I think I should, you know, I should show you once again. I'm, I'm gonna power it up again. So there is a different case for this that you can get and it's in, inside the box. And you can use, I think, free... No, let me get it. Okay, so I'm back, and these are the two back covers that you can use for your Kobo Vault. And this is the one with the lithium battery, and this is the one where you can put four AAA batteries. So you get to choose which one you prefer. I suppose it's safer to use the lithium battery, but for backup this is also excellent. And this just proves that the device is made to last, just in case the company goes out of business, you casually get this and you put batteries in it, and you can use your hard roller just like that, as if nothing ever happened. Now, I put this back together, I power it up once again. As you can see on the back, it says Kobo Vault Pro, close to the camera, reminds me of one of these Huawei devices. And I'm not sure what this is, looks like infrared, or I don't know, maybe it's like, maybe it's an LED to make QR scanning a lot easier, I suppose, maybe. I'm gonna try it out, so let's power this up and let's do the first steps of the setup. And of course, here it says the firmware and everything, the app version and the serial number, firmware version, system version, all of this information, which is specific to this device. And I hit next. It says security verification in progress. 
I should mention that Kobo is in the business of manufacturing more expensive hardware wallets. So they have one which is like $500 or more. And it's designed, it's their first generation hardware wallet. It's designed to withstand all the shocks and all the environmental hazards of mining in China. And it's designed for miners in China. And this is like their consumer friendly device, which is not as durable. It doesn't have the same metal materials. So here it says that I should scan the QR code from the web authentication page. And that's going to be the first verification step that I do with this. And let's, let's do it. Scan QR code. As you can see, I have this image here on the camera. On their website, under the Kobo Vault, there is a web authentication menu that you access and you get a caution screen. So the process goes like this, you scan the QR code and then you get like a code which I'm not going to show to you. So this is a six digit code which is unique to the device and you type it in the web wallet and this is the way you authenticate with Kobo to make sure that this is legit and nobody else has used this before you. Now, of course, this is air gapped, so there is no way for this to actually know if this operation to verify the authenticity of the device was a success or not. You need a web application to verify it. But you have two buttons here. One says that it's fine and the other says that it failed. So you can either check success or failed. And I'm covering this just for, you know, security purposes to let you know that you're not supposed to show it to anyone else. And after you, this, you set a password for the device. Let me quickly set something up. And then you confirm it once again. And I set up a fast one, which also ended up being short. And it says it's too short, so I need to do something about it. It says must contain at least 10 characters and include upper and lower case letters and digits. Symbols are allowed case sensitive. So let me try again. It feels like an Android device. Actually, I could not tell the difference from a typing point of view between this one and the HTC Exodus phone. Usually I'm an iPhone kind of guy, but this is still nice. And it's still proof that it uses open source software. And after this step where we set a password for the device, it lets you to either create a new HD, which stands for Hierarchical Deterministic Wallet, or to recover one. And in this case, I'm going to create one. And before this, it asks you to agree to the terms of service and the privacy policy. Create Vault. Here it tells you the basic information that you should not share this with anyone else. And it even recommends you to buy the Kobo tablet, to which we're going to go back in a few minutes so I can show you the differences between the Kobo tablet and the Bill Foddle. And then you hit next. And now it says, please check your surroundings. You're not supposed to show this to anyone ever. So be cautious, be careful. This is the key to your wallet. And if anyone gets this, they can get your coins. So you should never share this with anyone. You know the rule. This is a 24 word backup, which relies on the 39. Be careful with this. So I'm gonna take a piece of paper, write it down, and then carry on. After you're done writing your words, it lets you know that... So how do I show this? It says, please confirm, and after this it says that there is no other way to retrieve your funds if you lose this 24 words seed phrase, also called the mnemonic, and it will not be displayed again after the initialization of this device. So you hit next step. 
and you're supposed to enter every word in this table. So this is a way to make sure that you have written every word correctly. This is your personal verification. And for this you have like a keyboard which is similar to the one that you have in every mobile phone, especially Android phones. So let me carry on with this and I'll get back with further explanations. Now I can show you the first word of this backup and this is only for the purpose of showing you that it has the BIP39 dictionary in its memory. So when you type something like OWN, it's going to give you suggestions as in own and owner. So let's say that you also have um, BA, so you can have baby and bachelor, which are part of the dictionary, as well as bacon and badge. So it works with suggestions, so you don't have to type the entire word. This is nice, this is their gap, so there is no way another device can intercept what you're doing here, but at the same time this is nice because it saves you time when you type. So let me get back to this. So if you type more than three letters of it, it automatically determines which word it is because that's how Bit39 works. So this is a lot faster than you would do something on the ledger or even on the Trezor, I guess. This is just very fast because you're so used to typing like this. It's the advantage of having a larger screen, so I'll get back and finish it. Okay, so this was a very fast verification because I would just type four letters and it would input the entire word for me. So that was a lot faster than I expected. It's faster than most of the fastest hardware wallets and it's all due to the large screen and the fact that I'm so used to typing on a smartphone screen that this felt very familiar. I did not have to undergo any kind of specific learning curve to use this device. So I gotta give them props, this was fast. Right now it's registering this wallet on the device and it's writing to the secure element. So if you're not aware, this kind of device runs with two chips. One is the microcontroller, which usually makes sure that the communication between the device and every part regarding it is secure or is more specifically correct. And then there's a security element which makes sure that this is harder to hack and it grants it some physical security. And now you can add your cryptocurrency. This has a Bitcoin only firmware that you can download and I am going to do that at some point. But right now I'm not going to stop the video just to do that specific task. So I picked BTC from the list because it's the only coin that's worth owning. And now it says scan QR code with Kobo Vault Mobile. So I should go to this specific website and scan a QR code to validate the fact that I have created this wallet and I set it up and I'll be back. So what this actually says is that I should scan this QR code with the application on the phone, on the mobile. So once again, this is the HTC Exodus 1S full Bitcoin node phone. And I'm using it mostly to show off all of these demos, mostly because I'm using the iPhone to film. So it's 80% installed. It's installing, it was actually 80% downloaded. So right now it's installing. I've opened it and now I'm supposed to allow it to scan this specific code, which I guess is not going to be valid anymore. So I suppose that this is like a private key and you should never show it to anyone. Or this creates, or this is a public key which lets you go to the watch only wallet. I just had a brain fart there, so I guess this is just a basic public key. Now it says it's binding the two devices, and I suppose this is how I get to the watch only side on the phone. So I'm going to allow the phone to check the funds on this specific device. This is the only one which signs transactions, 
but this one can actually verify transactions. And I got a firmware upgrade notice that I should do an update. And I'm gonna say not now. And right now it shows me a wallet with the funds that I have in this one. And for this I'm going to say done and it says congratulations setup is now complete. So this was the initial setup. I only have in the menu BTC just like every good coiner should. And I have just one address. Don't send me any BTC to this one because most likely I will never check this wallet again. I've only created it for demo purposes. I can pick the number of addresses that I want to have. So let's say I want 9 because why should you not have 9? And you can rename them and you can use a different layout. So these are called BTC1, BTC2, up to BTC9. I picked 9 addresses and I have them here. And I also have a menu for signatures, but there are no signatures involved. And as you can see at the top, the battery has quite drained. It was like, I think 40% when I first started. It's been like 20 minutes and right now it's at 16%. So it's not, I guess I did not charge it too much. So that's the reason why. I can once again do a sync with the mobile phone or another mobile device. I have settings where I have lots of options, including wipe device, which I suppose I will be doing, so I can perform a firmware upgrade and put the BTC-only firmware on it, and then put the latest version. And what else is here? You can put a pattern lock, and for this I'm going to type in my password. So just like on every Android phone, you can have like a pattern lock to lock or unlock this. It needs to be at least four dots. I don't know what I'm doing here, but it's something. So you can do something like this if you want. I don't want to, I'm going to reset this anyway. And this is actually a fingerprint scanner. So I did not know what this is, but it's a fingerprint scanner. So let me try it. So it says place your finger on the fingerprint. I will do it. Oh, and then you click on start registration. And now I'm supposed to move my finger around until it gets to 100% in scanning. You know, different positions just in case it's not always ideal when it scans. So you put the corners of your finger so it gets every small portion of the tip of your finger. And luckily this is air gap so I don't have to trust anyone's security that my fingerprint will not get, you know, leaked somewhere. And I can use the fingerprint to unlock the device and to sign transactions. So this can be useful, you know, if this gets stolen, nobody can actually sign transactions with it unless they have your fingerprint. So it feels a lot more personal. I give them that, they put a lot of effort into designing this, but it feels a lot like an Android phone. So I suppose that's also a plus because it feels familiar. But with QR codes, I guess, you know, when you want to sign transactions, you just scan QR codes and that's a lot simpler to make payments. And if you want, I'm going to switch this off. If you want to perform on any firmware upgrades, so right now it's switching off, it's just like an Android phone. It even vibrated before switching off. So you're going to need an SD card that you put inside of here to do the firmware upgrade. And even when you want to sign transactions, it's kind of the same deal. You can even, can you? So you can charge this with the battery on. So I'm, I'm such a newbie, I took the battery off to charge this, but you can actually charge it while the battery is still on. Or can you? No, you can't, sorry. 
I misconnected it. But still, it's nice. And I like the way it feels, I, way, I like the way it's constructed. This is $169, 170 possibly, you also pay for shipping. If you think that this is for you, check it out. I guess if you want, I can also give you the discount cards. I have one which gives you, I think, $5 and one which gives you 5% off your first order. If you want to buy one of these, just message me and I'm going to give you the two cards and you can use them. I don't mind. You can also get the Kobo tablet and right now this is the ending and the grand finale of the video. When I show you the differences between the Kobo tablet and the build file because I've taken a closer look at the way they work while I was charging this and I can speak more about it. Okay, so here I have the Kobo tablet and as you can see when you open it it's going to be, you know, in its initial phase it's like this. And you're supposed to open it by sliding and then you need to unscrew by using the screwdriver which is in the box. You need to unscrew one, two, three little screws right here. And after you unscrew them, you move this so it's like a three part piece. And after this you take them aside and you're going to take the letters from these little sheets and you're going to construct your seed phrase by putting them here. So you just put all the parts. And they have support for 12 words on each one of them. I have received the delivery with two of these, so I'm going to have 24 words. And they are even numbered, so when you move this... Actually, no, sorry, I'm, I'm an idiot, so let me take that back. You have two sides. I'm just tired. You have two sides. And you have to unscrew also this side of it. And you have here the parts with words numbered 1 to 12. So you're going to put them here and if you have a 24 word backup you're going to put the other part here. So you open this, you remove the letters from these pieces and you're going to put the first four letters of each word here in the right order. And if you're not sure about whether or not this is two or this is two, you have this to let you know that it's numbered like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's numbered like this. Now, something which is different from the build file, fundamentally, is the fact that in the build file you open it by removing this door, and for that you need to screw this 90 degrees and then you're you're going to need to push this part and move this and you insert all of the letters through here so you don't actually remove this all the way ever on the build file you insert every letter individually in here so this is the big design difference because in here you put them just like that and then here you insert them one by one so I believe that this is more sophisticated and elegant. This requires a lot more effort with the screwdriver. But otherwise they are both nice solutions. This costs like 30 or 40 dollars. This costs a hundred dollars. And another major difference is in the way that they bring the letters. So these are from the bill funnel and I have removed some to construct a demo seed phrase. And these are from Kobo. And I'm not going to talk about, you know, their quality and the way they're made. Even though I feel like the Bill Fuddle ones are sturdier. This one actually bends, so I've just slightly pressed against it and it bends. This one, I have to make an extra effort for it to bend. So this feels a lot more high quality, a lot sturdier. But these are just the numbers, you know, not the numbers, the letters. You remove them one by one and you construct your seed. But something very significant about, about Build Fuddle that you don't find in Kobo, and I suppose this is the major difference in price, the main factor, is the fact that on this one you only have small cap letters 
on one side. So on the other side you have nothing. But with the build file you have capital letters on one side and small cap letters on the other. So if you want to construct a seed which is case sensitive or you want to store a password or something, you can do that with the build file. And I believe that with the newer models, these are ordered in structures in a different way, so you don't have to remove them from a sheet of metal, you actually get them from separate compartments. So for example, if you want to get letter A, you're going to get lots of letter A which are found in one place and those are also easier to dispose. As opposed to these, you should never throw them away. So in both cases, if you remove some letters from one of these, you should never throw them away in this state because anyone who is knowledgeable can look at this and figure out which letters you have used. So you have used some A's, you have used some B's, some C's, some E's, and just scramble the letters until they determine the words that you have used. So that's a bad idea. If you throw these away, also dispose every, of these, every one of these letters individually and throw them away separately. So the letters should be separate from this frame which holds all of the letters. The same with this. So you remove the plastic wrapping from it. And now you're going to have to remove every letter individually and you should remove them all by the way when you construct your seed. It doesn't matter that you don't use them all. Remove them all. Use the ones that you want then dispose them in a way that cannot actually or is very difficult for someone who is knowledgeable and wants to hack your seed to actually you know get to it you want to make it as hard as possible so this has been the difference so essentially the Kobo is a free part steel backup whereas the build bottle is a two-part one which has an opening on the side which you can close you want and this has been it thank you very much for watching I've closed it with the bill file I'm going to close the Kobo tablet also it's ironic because their hardware wallet looks like a tablet but this is the Kobo tablet and this is the bill file get whichever you think is right for you they're steel plates but this one is more refined I mean the bill file, which is why it costs twice as much, but this is basic and can get the job done if you know what you're doing. And thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe and like and whatever, I'll see you in the next one.